Hey guys, welcome back. So today we want to talk about the NGSW program, which was the next generation squad weapon. And the M7 that we have here is the rifle that was selected by the Army. But one of the things to come out of that program was true velocity ammunition. True velocity uh, claims to be a really technologically superior, superior solution to traditional brass cased ammunition. And we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about some of the properties of the true velocity ammunition. We're gonna test the accuracy because they make some pretty big claims regarding precision. We're gonna do some testing with guns they say you probably shouldn't shoot it out of to see why they say that. And we're just generally gonna explore this ammunition. What does it mean? What's the history of polymer cased ammunition? And is it the future? So. Stick around, it should be a fun video. We will do some accuracy testing, not with the M7, but we will be using a bolt action rifle that we know shoots just about everything extremely well. So we're really looking forward to today's video. Hope you guys are as well. So grab something to drink, buckle up and get ready to explore more about the true velocity, in this case, 308 ammunition. So polymer cases are nothing new. If you go back to the 1950s, polymer cases were being played with back then, patents were filed, and so, it's not a new technology. Matter of fact, if you go into the late 80s, Steyr had, I believe, the ACR rifle, which also was a, was a prototype, but also used a polymer case. And then we had the G11 from H&K, which used not necessarily a polymer case, but a caseless ammunition. So there's been tinkering over the decades with both polymer cases, caseless ammunition, and things like that. So people have been trying to push that ball forward for a while. True Velocity kind of stepped in when nobody else was really messing with polymer cartridges and kind of took the ball and ran with it. Now they claim to have filed some 350 various patents on their technology, which I haven't seen those patents, but that sounds pretty interesting to me. So there's probably something a little bit different in what they're doing versus what's already been done. But I can't really speak to that. So what are some of the upsides to using a polymer case? Well, the biggest upside that I can see is the fact that it really does reduce the weight of the load a soldier or an individual might have to carry about 28 to 30 percent in terms of weight reduction and that's comparing the 168 grain sierra match king loaded into the true velocity ammunition to the federal gold medal match which is also using a 168 grain sierra match king so you do have a significant weight reduction how much well one round of true velocity ammunition weighs about 0.7 of an ounce. One round of conventional brass cased ammunition with the same bullet gives you a weight of 0.9 of an ounce. So you have about 0.2 of an ounce difference between each individual round. When you load 20 rounds into a PMAG, then you start to see the weight savings add up. So 20 rounds of true velocity has a weight of 19.4 ounces. And then 20 rounds of 168 grain federal gold medal match has a magazine loaded weight of 23.9 ounces. That's about 4.5 ounces of weight savings per magazine. That's substantial. Now, if you take this ammunition and put it into a crew serve weapon, like a belt fed general purpose machine gun, and you start carrying many hundreds, if not thousands of rounds, you're really gonna see a significant weight savings. So it does have that going for it. But there's some downsides, and that's what we're gonna talk about in the next segment, are the downsides to the, the true velocity ammunition, and then we'll talk about the construction of the true velocity ammunition and how it differs from that of traditional brass cases. So we've toured various ammunition manufacturers over the years. We've toured NATO allies and their manufacturing. We've also recently toured Palmetto State Armory and their new ammunition manufacturing facilities, and we will have that video up here for you shortly. So I'm familiar with the process of punching brass and making traditional cartridges from brass. True velocity differs considerably in terms of how the cases are constructed. So with a brass case, you take a little brass ingot and it goes through a bunch of different stretching processes and forming processes and annealing processes just to get the case prepped for primer, powder, and bullet. It's pretty extensive and it is time consuming and costly to a degree. Now, true velocity presumably would lower the, the amount of time required to produce a case it would reduce the cost if it was used in mass production. But as it currently stands with commercial ammunition, there is no cost savings, right? This box 
from Bass Pro from their big display that they had cost $70. That's $3.50 per round. That is not palatable for most people, especially when you're talking about a case that can't even be reloaded. So that's going to take us into our next discussion. We're going to talk about how this case is constructed and some of the negatives or some of the downsides to using a polymer case versus a brass case. We already know how a brass case is formed. How do they do it with the true velocity ammunition? Well, there's a couple of different steps involved. First of all, you have a stainless steel head to the case. The stainless steel head is machined on a CNC machine, and then the polymer case body is molded around that case head. So this head is gonna support the pressures of the case. The polymer is gonna be supported by the chamber walls itself. And in manufacturing this, they did things a little bit differently. So with a brass case, when you're punching that flash hole, the flash hole is what allows the flame front from the primer to pass through the case head into the powder. On a traditional case, that's punched. That can be punched at an angle. It can create burrs, which would cause an uneven flame front in the case, which could cause variations in velocity and things like that, inconsistencies. So what they've done with True Velocity is they've machined the flash hole into the stainless steel head. They've made it larger than it needs to be. Then they've pressed a brass ring into that flash hole to get it to the proper size. And then they go through with a high resolution camera and a computer and every single round passes past the camera looking for burrs and imperfections. And then an algorithm on the computer will call out a bad round and dispose of it so it doesn't make it into the final production. So that's pretty interesting. And perhaps that's part of the reason why True Velocity can make the claim that they have single digit variances from round to round in terms of velocity, where typically on regular rifle ammunition, it's not uncommon to see 20 feet per second or 30 feet per second variances from cartridge to cartridge. They're claiming much lower and we'll test that later in this video. Then you have the injection molded polymer body of the case. And you can actually feel flashing around the base of the case where the injection molding takes place. Now, this injection molding presumably would be more cost-effective and re require less time to produce, but again, that hasn't translated into commercially available ammunition. Right now, it's ridiculously expensive. Then you get up to the neck. Now, with brass, brass is a metal. It's a, it's a very pliable metal, but it's still a metal, and there's a certain rigidity to the neck of a case. So when you press a bullet in, there's quite a bit of friction. Then you can crimp it, and that crimp and that friction is going to hold that bullet securely in the case on a traditional brass case. Well, with polymer, polymer isn't going to be as rigid as brass. So they've pressed the bullet into the case, but the friction that it generates is probably less. I'm speculating here. But then if you look at the neck of the case, you'll see a red sealant. Well, sealant isn't uncommon, but this looks more like a glue, more like red Loctite. And I suspect that they're using that glue to hold that round in the neck of the case so that when it goes through the feeding process, has, the process it hits the feed ramp and gets ramped up into the chamber. It doesn't cause setback. Also, when the round is sitting in the magazine, the gun's firing, the rounds are going to move back and forth in the magazine. The nose of the bullet can hit the front of the magazine. And that's to keep the bullet from, again, experiencing setback, which could create an unsafe condition. So I would imagine that brass ring inside the flash hole coupled with the use of what appears to be some sort of a glue material at the neck to hold the bullet in is why this ammunition is not reloadable according to true velocity. Now, another claim that's made on the box is that not only are you not supposed to reload it, but you're not supposed to fire it in weapons that have a fluted chamber. Both Jason and I absolutely hate it when a company tells us what we can or cannot do. So we're gonna take this true velocity round, we're gonna put it in this PTR-91, which has a fluted chamber, and then we're gonna stand back and pull the string just out of an abundance of caution. All right, so we're gonna stick the round in there. All right, put her on fire. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. All right, make sure this thing doesn't fly back and hit me in the face. Well, I think I know why. So I think we figured out why you don't want to shoot a polymer case out of a fluted chambered firearm like the PTR-91. That's why. You can see that the case head separated right where the stainless steel cup is on the end. You can see the flutes, they're really deeply etched into that polymer case. 
It would appear that at the moment of firing, that polymer has expanded into the flutes in the chamber, created additional friction, causing the case to momentarily stick. Then the gun tries to pull the case out while the case is being stuck in the chamber of the flutes, and it rips the head off the polymer case. You can also see it looks like it's melted a little bit, so obviously there's quite a bit of heat taking place inside there as well. It's a factor in this. Now, guns like the PTR-91, HK-91 have a very high bolt carrier velocity, so right at the moment of firing, they're trying to pull that case out, and that's probably why you don't want to do that. Speaking of heat, True Velocity makes the claim that their case reduces wear and tear on your gun because it reduces the amount of heat that's transferred to the chamber and the bolt face. That's on the back of the box. So conventional wisdom is that brass being a conductor of heat, when the gun fires, some of the heat that's in the chamber is transferred to the case, and when the gun pulls that case out, it brings that hot case with it and throws the spent case out the ejection port along with the heat that it's carrying. And conventional wisdom is that it's carrying that heat away from the action of the gun. True Velocity makes the exact opposite claim of their ammunition. They claim that it's saving your gun from premature wear and heat by not conducting heat. So when the gun fires, it doesn't absorb the heat or transfer heat to the chamber. It's just kind of a neutral, has neutral properties. It just comes out, goes out the ejection port, and there's no transfer of heat to either the chamber or the bolt face. Something of a dubious claim most of the heat's already been generated in the chamber, so the brass definitely is taking some of that heat away, at least in my non-scientific opinion. And then transferring heat to the face of a bolt, does that really cause premature wear, especially in a semi-automatic weapon on a civilian market? I can't say that it does, but I can't prove or disprove either theory. I just wanted to put that out there. Twenty-three fifty-three. Twenty-three seventy. Twenty-three ninety-five. So the single digit claims are false. So let's do a little bit of accuracy testing with the true velocity ammunition. We're gonna use our MPA bolt action rifle. This gun shoots just about every 308 cartridge I've ever fed it accurately, including just regular ball. Three rounds loaded. Got targets set up at 100 yards. And let's see what we get in terms of accuracy. Well, that's a problem. All right. So that first one was a light primer strike. That ain't good. Again, same round, give it a second strike. And that's two clicks and no bang. All right. Try the next one. Just so you guys know, there appears to be something slightly out of spec with the ammunition because we're getting these light primer strikes, which you can see there. But if I take a federal round, just to show you the gun works fine. Just a really soft strike. Try one more time.
Nope. So it would appear that something dimensionally is slightly different. It doesn't look like that primer's pushed past flush, so it's not over inserted. So in terms of accuracy, it's pretty comparable to the Federal stuff out of the SCAR. This is the Federal Gold Medal Match. Three shot group, two shots went to the same hole, one over here. This measures about 1.2 inches. Over here, about 1.4 inches, two to the same hole, one out here. Pretty similar performance. But there's some definite downsides to the True Velocity ammunition. Cost, three bucks and 50 cents per round. Prohibitively expensive when there's no true benefit to be realized from commercial use. So what do we notice out here today with problems with the ammunition? First of all, out of the bolt gun, light primer strikes, we couldn't even get a single shot fired. So definitely requires a gun with a military type firing pin, things like that. So the SCAR, the M7, guns like that, it would work just fine. Just don't put it in a fluted chamber because then you'll have a case head separation and bring the gun to its knees. Also, we noticed in just regular firing out of the M7 that the neck of the case was splitting on some of the spent cases. Now, the polymer is very pliable, and the neck's splitting is probably another reason why True Velocity says the ammunition is not reloadable, but that can become a problem. If you start getting pieces separating in the chamber, those pieces can work their way into the action of the weapon or get stuck in the chamber and cause the weapon to go down. So, in the end, I'm not impressed with the ammunition. I don't think it's ready for prime time. I don't think it's a suitable replacement for match ammunition. I don't think it's a suitable replacement for duty ammunition. I just don't see much use for it at all. All right, guys, hope you enjoyed today's video, found it informative. If you have any questions about the True Velocity stuff, you can ask those questions down below. If you'd like to support us here at the Military Arms Channel, please consider becoming part of our Patreon family, a link in the video description below. You can support us right here with the thanks button or the join button underneath the video player you're watching right now. And last but not least, please swing by and check out Copper Custom. Thank you for 15 years of support, and we'll talk to you guys soon.